Hey guys, it's Amy, your golf coach. During this winter project, I've been working on gaining iron distance. In order to do that, I was focusing on speed in the downswing. When we start talking about speed, we immediately think hip turn. Yes, hips are the main engine for this speed, but if you don't use the correct hip turn, it can actually hurt your speed more than help you. So let's go ahead and amplify that hip turn. First of all, why is the hip turn so important? Well, let me show you. When you are swinging and you turn your hips, your hips make your shoulders turn, which the arms are attached to. So your shoulders make the hands swing, therefore swinging the club head. Club head speed is linked directly to your distance. If you have a fast club head speed, the ball will most likely travel far. But if you have a very slow club head speed, the ball will go short. Now you know why the hip turn is so important. It's the main part of the body that creates a lot of speed. But out on the golf course, you see quite a few different kinds of swings out there. The top two most common mistakes amateurs make, number one is not turning the hips the correct way by turning the knees with the hips like this. If you are turning your knees with the hips now, you have no stability in your lower body. That means it's actually slowing down your hips because your, your balance is going all over the place. So your hips are slower, therefore you're hitting it shorter with slower club at speed. Number two would be early extension. Early extension is when you're thrusting your hips forward instead of keeping your spine angle down and really turning around back, creating a lot of speed. If you are thrusting your hips forward, not only only are your hips turning slow plus because your chest is going farther away from the golf ball now your hands have to manipulate to try and make some kind of contact with the golf ball also slowing down your swinging part so you're losing a lot of speed and accuracy either way so now we know why the hip turn is so important I've shown you the top two mistakes a lot of amateurs tend to make and you probably know exactly which one you fit into how do we fix it of course, I'm going to aim it for you, but the hip turn is the most difficult part of the swing to fix because in the downswing, when you're turning them, it's really, really fast and you're creating power. So it's kind of like taken over by intuition. So it's something super difficult to control. In this kind of a case, you need to do like partial movements and then apply it into your full swing. That's the fastest way you'll fix your hip turn. So let's amify it. First thing you want to do is do these three movements anywhere, everywhere, all the time. Imagine there's a wall behind your hips and you're gonna do three things. When you are set up, you're touching, barely touching the walls. You're not leaning against it. You're touching the walls with your hips. And then in the backswing, when you take it back, your trail hip will be touching on the wall only. And then when you do your transition, remember the step we talked about? When you do the step, now the trail hip is staying on the wall, sliding, and then as soon as you get this lead leg anchored and super stabilized and you feel that, that tension in the leg, you're gonna go ahead and turn those hips, boom, with a lot of speed, and now the lead hip is going to push the wall like this. Touch, slide, push. Touch, slide, push. So this is what I want you to do at home, in your office, in the elevator. Just get these three movements in. Because if you are turning your knees with your hips, watch, your hips are kind of like just brushing past the wall, barely touching or pushing, right? Or if you're early extending, you are thrusting forward and moving away from the wall. We don't want either, okay? So you understand, touch, slide, and push. Once you get that in there, let's kind of get it a little bit easier so you can apply it into your swing. Ta-da! My favorite things to use, index finger, right? <laughs> For my core index theory. So we're gonna use both your index, set up like this, so your index are pointing the same direction as your knees, making sure you're not turning your knees with the hips. Watch what the knees do when I turn the hips correctly. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Knees go back and forth. It doesn't straighten all the way. They're always bent, but it goes back and forth. Turn, 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 turn. I don't want to see the knees turning. That really hurts my joints. Ow, we don't want that, ow. 
we like our ankles and knees to be nice and healthy. So back and forth is what we're trying to do. And then we're going to incorporate the touch, slide, and push into this by going touch and slide, touch and slide, touch and slide. Look at that waist shift. That just feels really great. Touch and slide. Am I the only one who's thinking about Will Smith? <laughs> so touch and slide. Once you get comfortable with that, it'll be a lot easier to apply into your swing rather than the three step. But the three step is really important because you need to really break down how the hips move and then kind of link them together. Let's put it into your full swing. Have an imaginary wall behind your hips. You're touching and sliding on it. Touch and slide like this. Wow, that was pretty solid. <laughs> if you're having issues hitting the golf ball too short or lacking a lot of club head speed, then try the touch, slide, push drill. Get your index in there, touch, slide, get it really into your system. You'll start turning your hips with a lot of power, gaining a lot of club head speed, therefore hitting the golf ball longer and straighter. <laughs> You've been 85. Thank you so much for golfing with me today and I'll see you in the next one. Mwah.